doing today, we're looking at the Ancestry database. And um, at the moment, you can use it from home until the end of December. Normally, it's in library use only. But because of the um, COVID-19 epidemic, where um, Ancestry and Find My Past have given us access from home. So that's really, really good. And the way to get there is through our, you have to go through our website to get the free, the free version. And um, I've put that on page two of the handout or page two of mine says so it's a fourth slide so you go to our web page cclc.vic.gov.au then to resort then to uh online resources and family history on the left right here and then you get to ancestry here and you click on that you have to put your library card number in and then there's another step but it'll, it'll show you on the screen and then you'll get into ancestry so it's very generous of them because you know they normally make you go to the library to use it but um at the moment you can use it from home but once uh once they stop the use uh, to get the free ancestry you'll have to come to the library or else and you can use one of our computers or you can use your own um your own laptop or whatever, own tablet, and you can then log on through our website and use Ancestry in the library. Uh, we have 24-hour Wi-Fi, so you can actually sit in the car park at midnight with your laptop, access our website, access our Ancestry at midnight in the car park near our libraries if you wish to do that. So I'm not saying you won't get pulled up by the police, but, you know, if you are, it's a legitimate excuse. I'm tracing my family history <laughs> at midnight. So... Uh, this is what Ancestry, the library version, looks like. I have to tell you, I love Ancestry. Now, can you see the Ancestry page? Yep. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I love Ancestry. I just, I know there's lots of, it's very American, you know, it's, it's, I know it's very commercial. I know all those things, but I just love it. You know, I just think it's such a wonderful thing. So you're going to hear a lot of gushy sort of stuff today, but, you know, it really is a wonderful database. So, um, you're not going to find, you see the ads on TV and you're not going to find everything you want in Ancestry. Like they say, you know, I just see ads. I type in a name and blah, blah, blah. All my, you know, family history comes up to William the Conqueror. That's not necessarily going to happen to you. You're going to find some records that apply to you or your ancestors, but you're not necessarily going to get a family tree that, that takes you back even five generations. But, you know, there's, there's lots of information on there and it really is, you know, worth looking at, especially as you can get it free from the library. You can um, subscribe yourself. It's about, um, I don't know, $300 or so for the year. So you have to make a decision whether you think that's worth it. But, um, you know, I think it's quite interesting. So Ancestry. So this is the page. When you log on, this is what you get through the library version. And then once you're there, there's two ways you can search. So you can go through the search. This is a front. The, this is the um, home page. You can just go here, begin searching, or at the top here on this um, little bar here, you can go to the search search screen. Then, so if you just begin searching from the home page, we'll go to here. Just type in a name. So sometimes. I feel that if you don't really know what you want, you just do a general search and just see what you get. Because if you, if you sort of if you know more information, a specific search is better. But if you don't really know any information about your person uh, or, uh, or very limited information, sometimes a general search is better. So I've just typed in Walter Thulis, that's the name of my grandfather. And then if I just hit search, what I get is 1,675 results. Well, clearly some of them aren't going to be my grandfather, but some of them will be. So if we just scroll down, and I assume you can see this, uh, I get all these various um, results. And I think, oh my goodness me, I don't know which is mine. So this is where you might decide, you can then filter your results at the side by um, down here, you want records from whatever country you're interested in. I'll put Oceania, which includes Australia. So we'll click on that. And this one here, well, that's my grandfather there. So I know uh, that's when he died. I actually know that that's when he died. So, um, so if I clicked on this record here, 
and then we'll get this is just his record of his will. Oh, which uh, I should actually backtrack to tell you what sort of records you can actually get. So you can see some of them here. You can get like birth, death, and marriage records, military records, immigration records, shipping records, um, uh, electoral rolls, records of where they're buried, um, divorce records. There's just there's just millions and millions of sorts of records there. If you've got American relatives, well, you can actually get a lot of, they do a lot of um, high school yearbooks and things like that. They've digitised high school yearbooks. They've digitised um, uh, just various lists of people. There's a whole myriad of resources that Ancestry have actually digitised. So they do um, give you lots and lots of different choices. The other thing they do very slow look, logging on here. The other thing uh, Ancestry do is they have formed a partnership with places like the National Archives of um, England in England, the Public Records Office of Victoria. So this is my grandfather's uh, will. Well, um, and you can see down the bottom here, source citation, Public Records Office of Victoria. So they've got this information straight from them. So they, they Public Records Office um, have, have agreements with um Ancestry and find my past, and and they um, allow them to um, like things like rate books and things. They they allow them to digitise the rate books and to index the rate books, and they allow them a period of maybe four years when when they get like exclusive access to it. So you might think that um, it's a public record; you shouldn't have to pay to use it. I can understand that argument, but it does actually take money to digitise a record. It does take money to um, index a record and therefore you know that you can see why the public records office would actually have to go into partnership with these people so um, in this case here because uh, my grandfather died in 1950 his will isn't actually digitized but they do actually have the record of it there so um, so I just found that through a general search we go back here but the point is I already knew uh, when when my grandfather died but if I didn't really know um, who, who um, when he did die, I'd be looking at these thinking, oh, golly, I don't know which one is him. And then I knew it was Walter Herbert Thiels. And so that is why um, sometimes a general search gives you so much information that really it's a bit useless. In which case, what you really need to do is we'll go back to the home page. And you want to go to the search page. So if you go to search page, all categories. And this is where you can start doing specific searches. Just see what I'm doing. So um, you can do it in three ways. You can just search by location, which is here. This other little map here. If you move it around, whatever country you're interested in, you just click on it. And that tells you, so there's a one set of records for Sri Lanka, uh, two for China, one in Uzbekistan. As you might imagine, there's a lot more in Australia. And uh, there's uh, 63 collections of records there. So if you want a specific country, this is, or, or your ancestors come from a specific country, this is a good place to start. So you can search by location. You can search by, um, on the um, right here, they, they sort of give you links to specific collections such as birth, death and marriage records, Australian birth, death and marriage records, those sorts of things. Or you can go to the card catalog and, and um, put it like a library card catalog and just put in a keyword search. So before we do that, what you also see on the search page is this show more options. So if you show more options, if I put in uh, Walter Theulis, there's two things we said about this. So I put in Walter Theulis. I can tick this box, match all terms exactly, and all I get is Walter Theulis. So if I'd put in, um, actually another example would be Frank Rouse, that's my dad. Uh, if I'd put in Frank Rouse, match all terms exactly, I wouldn't get Francis Rouse. I'd only get Frank Rouse. So Sometimes, especially if you've got like a John Smith sort of name, a common name, match all terms exactly is a good thing to do. But 
you have to remember that sometimes you tick this box for one search and it stays on for other uh, other subsequent searches and sometimes you don't you get no results and then you realize you've got that little box tick so just make sure you um you untick that box if you don't really want to match your terms exactly because it can actually cut down your search results so you can match so that's one way to search or else you can add a um add a, add a birth so i know my grandfather was born um, I think it was 1900. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember what it was. Um, and then um, you can put his marriage down and say if you put him his marriage in, I don't know, 1920, whatever it was, it wasn't 1920. Um, we'll put 1924. Can't remember, it doesn't matter. You get the picture. So you can then add a birth date, a marriage date. You can add maybe the mother's name, the father's name. So especially you have, a, have a, like a, a common name, like a John Smith sort of name. Sometimes it's good to add all these extra extra points like when they were born, when they died, father's, father's name or maybe mother's maiden name. So that just narrows down your results a bit. On the other hand, if you put in uh, the wrong name, the wrong date, sometimes you get no results. So I, I sort of, the way I, I, I just like, the way I prefer to search is just put a name in and have as little detail as I can because if you put too much detail in, you sometimes don't get a result. You see that with the um, Victorian birth deaths and marriages. Like if you have one mistake on that, you get no results at all because they're very unforgiving like the Victorian birth deaths and marriages, whereas ancestry is um, a lot more forgiving if you get what I mean. That if you, if you spell a name wrong, they give you alternatives. So if you spell um, Francis with a... Why, uh, for instance, you know, F R F R A N C I S or E S, you know, they, they will give you alternatives. But um, some databases like the Victorian Birth System Marriages, you know, one strike and you're out. You don't get any chances whatsoever. So, um, so it's worth fiddling around with this search screen page. And if you don't get the results that you want the first time, add a birth year or take out a birth year, whatever you've done, add the mother's maiden name, uh, maybe add the place you know, just, just, just try a few combinations of, of, um, of say, father's first name, father's last name. Just try some various combinations. And sometimes you just get a hit if you do that. Um, there's a key word. I, I wouldn't – I saw this once. I did a talk and someone put a key word in. It says something like, served in the Boer War and did this, this, and this. It was almost like an essay in the keyword wow. section. <laughs> well, I, don't do that. Don't do that because <laughs> – because it just searches for everything you know I, I personally don't do anything in the keyword section but you know you, it depends how um it depends how, how not how desperate you are but yeah sometimes you are desperate you're trying to get a result so sometimes you might if you put keywords say maybe mariner for instance you, you know you might get another another index list come up so um it's just I, I like the plus and minus for the birth year as well in the marriage. Oh yeah, year. that is good. There, yeah, thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. So if we don't know, so I don't know. I can't remember when he was born, my grandpa. But if you think it was about nineteen hundred, if you put plus and minus five years, well, that means it won't be looking for anything in sixteen forty-five. So yeah, so that is mm -hmm. a really really good thing. And you can see, as Tracy said, uh, the same thing with the marriage that it does um, that it does um, sort of cut down your uh, or, or sort of gives you gives you a year. A, 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 a year frame and um, mm. without um, sort of having right. to be too exact. Yeah. Because what family members remember might not be quite right. The year. Yes. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So this is, yeah, so because I'm coming at this because I sort of know my, well, not that I can remember <laughs> when he was married, but <laughs> <laughs> technically I have it written down somewhere. Yeah. So if you don't know, and Tracy's right, which gets into um, family stories. But, oh, the other thing, of course, with, with marriages, of course, you know, if they, if she was, uh, if the, if the mother was pregnant, they sometimes lie about the marriage date. <laughs> they sort of move a bit before the baby was born. So, you know, so they can be um, reinventing the, the story as you go on. So, um, yeah, so that is why this, um, this birth date. And also you, you'd find with birth dates that, you know, when, when you got your ancestor that they, They've got, you know, when they were born or when the birth was registered and all of a sudden, you know, they apply to go overseas, they apply to join up and the, the lad's only 16 and he should have been 21 and they lied about his age and then they mm -hmm. get married and they lie about their age or they're 45 and they say they're 28 or something, you know, so they, they lie for various reasons, add ages on, take, age, take years off. So, so that is why, yeah, sometimes 
with this birthday that it is good to sort of be a bit more um, flexible. And if you don't put a date in at all, as I said, you're, you're going to get someone from 1645, which is just sort of in, irrelevant to your search. So that does really help you with your, um, with your, um, to get a better result. So, um, so we've got um, the search screen. So we can, let me just see what I'm, my notes say. My, I'm not really following my notes, I have to tell you that. You were doing keyword search. We're doing keyword search. Saying how, how crappy oh, it was. Saying how crappy it was. <laughs> saying how what? it can sometimes skew your results. Yes. <laughs> or give you no results. So, <laughs> so, if we, so we can search a specific collection in three ways. We can go to, as I said before, explore location, which is sort of fun. I, I think that's really fun um, because, okay, we'll go to Sweden. If I've had my DNA done and I'm 7% Swedish or Norwegian. I can't remember. Either way, I like to pretend yeah. I'm a Viking. So, Me you too. Know, yeah, yes. <laughs> if I do be surprised, I mean, like I'm otherwise English, 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 and 2% German or something. But basically, uh, especially as we came from Northern England, uh, you know, you've, well, a lot of people seem to have a bit of uh, Scandinavian blood in them. So um, so we might find, I, I don't think I'll find a record for them. But the, so here is, well, I've just put in Sweden. And here's all the uh, records I have for Sweden. So, um, you know, every country um, has different amounts of records. So family history is, as you probably know, a bit of an Anglo thing. There's lots of records for Australia, for England, for America, but some of the other European countries or um, African countries, you know, they have very few records available and, um, you know, it's, it's just sort of um, depends on what the records are. Of course, um, a lot of European countries, they've got a lot more parish records that haven't been digitised. Um, and and they had less, uh, they, they had civil registration came later. So in England, civil registration, that is where the government registers births, deaths and marriages, came in in, I think it was 1836. So, so of course, when... Um, when Australia was colonised, well, then we we introduced the English system as well, and same with New Zealand. So, so our records, right from early on, were, were basically all, essentially all um, government records. So, therefore, we've got a good history of um, it, it's good rec history of records. Whereas in in Europe, um, if it's if it's a parish record, that is to say, a birth, death, and marriage was registered at the parish church. Well, there's no sort of central, um, there was no sort of central record keeping system, so um, you have less, ac you may have less access to those parish records. And this is where uh, Family Search, if you know Family Search, it's the um, Latter Day Saints Family Search dot org, I think it is, yes. and that's run by the. Um, Latter-day Saints of the Mormons and they for years and years and years the past 40 50 years they've been going around to all these small parish churches everywhere throughout the world they uh microfilm the records they index the records and therefore and a lot of them are available on their family search um database so you know you can't family search is free it's freely available online and it's really worth looking at as well and it, you, you can you don't have to be a member of the library or anything to, to use it so so if you can't find what you want on Ancestry, it is really worth looking at Family Search. And actually also um, Find My Past, which the library also subscribes to, has also got a lot of records. Some the same as Ancestry, some are different. But, um, you know, I'm sort of a bit of an Ancestry fan. Anyway, so I've looked at Sweden. So if you're trying to find a particular record, well, have a look through, click on the map and find the country you want. And then you can um, just search the records for that area. So... If we just go back, oh no, go back to here. So that's how you can search specifically. You can always go to the left here, uh, the right, in fact, as it's known, on the right here, where they have a whole list of different databases. So the UK Census Collection, we'll talk about later. The um, Australia's, Australian Voters Lists, we'll talk about that later. So they're all various um different categories of records that you can look at. So that's worth looking at as well. Or if you want the um, the US Federal Census Collection, that's really good. That's that's um, 
they've got US and Canada federal uh, census collections. You'd, you'd find, of course, if you're English, that um, some of your ancestors went to New Zealand, some went to America, some would have gone to Canada. So America especially has got a lot of records that are, um, so the English census only goes to 1911 due to privacy reasons. They haven't released it ones after that. But uh, there's often records in America that are, you know, 20 years old, 30 years old, that we would never have made, that would never be public in Australia. So I think each state has, as you know, from the voting for the last federal, the last presidential election, you know, every state has their own rules in America. So you can sometimes find things in America that you're never, ever going to find online in Australia or England. So, um, so you can search that. We'll look at that later. Or go to the car catalogue. Now, the car catalogue is really interesting because so, sometimes you think, oh, you know, I've seen this somewhere. So one thing that I look at a bit is um, uh, this, the Freemasons. The early, uh, the early uh, Freemasons, Freemason lodges in Australia were all formed under the English Freemasons or the Irish Freemasons. And so they actually have all the lists online. They're, they're actually amazing to look at because in, 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 the, um, in the 1880s, last 1800s, so many people were Freemasons, you know, it was, it was quite, apart from Catholics, they like, it was a lot, um, you know, migrants and, and Jewish people and all these people. So a lot of, a lot of really wealthy people in Australia were Freemasons. As I said, apart from the Catholics, they had their own rules about this. So the, this English um, lodge has got a lot of, um, even though it says England, has got a lot of Australian Freemasons. So if you're looking, it tells you when they're joined, tells you their occupation. So if you are looking for a, um, you know, for, for other information about your grandparents or your grandfather, of course, men, of course. Um, the, this Freemason list is interesting. But the Irish Lodge, the, the, the Irish Lodge is actually under Freemasons with an S. So it's a keyword search. So look under both Freemasons and Freemason to get what you want. But, you know, it's a car catalogue. You have to just look for what you want. But... um. They're just really interesting lists. And even though it says Ireland, it says England, they include lots of Australian records. So that's the car catalogue. That's the other thing. If you're looking for, um, you know, a state of America, I'm putting Delaware. In fact, we didn't even spell it right. Spell it right. There we go. And that just tells you a whole list of records for, that includes Delaware. So... So that's really good. So the car catalog's good for if you have no idea what sort of database there might be, put in a keyword search and then it comes up with lots of different things. Now, before we get on to um, the special collections, Ancestry does have, um, you can put a wild, does have sort of search strategy. So you can put a wild card in. So if you're looking for, if you're looking for Elizabeth and you don't know whether her name is spelled with a S or a Z, you can put, type in, um, use the asterisk to replace one letter. So, um, <coughs> or if you're looking, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, sorry, use the question mark to replace one letter and the asterisk replaces more than one letter. So this will search for Elizabeth, or Elizabeth with a Z or Elizabeth with an S. Or if you look, or the name like Johnson, is it Johnston, Johnson, Johnson with an E, Johnson with an A, you know, all those various combinations or Gardner, Gardiner, Gardiner, Gardiner. You know, this is where you do the asterisk to, um, to replace the last few letters. So that would, that search would bring up Elizabeth with a Z or an S and Johnson. Johnson, Johnston, all those sort of variations. So as this year, as I said before, is quite forgiving. So if I put in Elizabeth Johnson, I may find those alternatives as well. They may offer you those alternatives, but sometimes they don't. And that's the same with names like Jim for James, uh, Bill for William, or WM for William, or JNO, that abbreviation they use for Jonathan. Sometimes they give you the alternatives, sometimes they don't. Just sort of depends. So um, so once again, if you can't find um, William Johnson, 
if you, if you use it, WM abbreviation, sometimes it comes up. So like with all databases, you just need to be a bit creative sometimes in how you search. So um, as I said, just, just try various ver different variations of the names. Um, that would be a huge uh, list. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's um, just an example, Tracy. <laughs> as, as how over the years. Elizabeth Johnson would be a huge list. Yeah. And, and, but the thing you'd with ancestry. You'd want one other thing. <laughs> you'd probably want one other thing that's true. Yeah. Like you'd probably put a birth year in or, or, yeah, so this is where you'd put a birth year in to just sort of um, yeah. bring it down. But um, it's just an example. But if you, um, if you like, you find out with the Victorian birth tests and marriages, they give you no more than 100 records of 100 hits these days when you put your search in but wow. ancestry will give you um 57 million you know yeah. whatever <laughs> which is really quite useless but that's why as tracy said so just now start. yeah it's a good start so we just put in 1850 as a birth year and then this is where i'd put in australia um and that would actually um that would actually cut down your results a little bit but it is just an example really to three of, million of, to three million but, <laughs> but it is more an example of, of how the fact that um if you can use these wild cards um wild cards are called that aren't they it does actually give you yeah. uh you know sort of shows you different options that have people all the different spellings so um <laughs> well, i have howard but i'm sure it's been spelt different ways in the past so that oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to so, do that. Yeah. So H O W C E R D because you know Frankie had the comedian. I think he's H O W E R D or A R D. And there's also because the other thing you have to remember is that um, all these uh, indexes have been transcribed from the original. So if you consider like a, a baby's been uh, the um, so you register your baby. And then the registrar puts down the wrong name because he wasn't thinking he wasn't whatever, or or and then and then so it's registered wrong or correctly in the first place, and then it's indexed again, and then ancestry re-indexes them again. So there's two or three stages from the original source. So that's why, um, yeah, is that an A? Is that an E? And that's why it may be written down wrong. Different family members spell things different ways. Um, there, there's a whole re raft of reasons why, and often it's because there's mistakes being made in the transcription or the indexing. And that's why you need to do, um, be a bit more um, creative. So I've seen, um, I think, Bricknell or Pricknell or something like that. A B was transcribed as a P or um, <laughs> mum's maiden name was Thewlis, T-H-E-W-L-I-S. Well, um, that's sometimes Thewlis, T-H-U-L-I-S, which is the other thing that um, another pitfall is that, of course, phonetic spelling is that, um, you know, the baby was registered as Thewlis, and then the, the, the registrar has, has written it down phonetically rather than written down how it should have been spelt. And if the parents weren't um, literate at the time, they would have no idea the name wasn't written down as it should have been spelt. So, um, you know, there is, um, with this, I think, exact, isn't there a, no, so you have a sounds like, that's pretty cool for names like, like Thewlis, um, or those sort of hard to pronounce TH names, um, similar initials, you know, and as this, you do offer you lots of different search settings. So, which, you know, if you can't find what you want, it's always worth looking at. Um, then we talked about John Smith, the John Smith thing. We, we, so if you do have the Elizabeth Johnson, it is worth putting in more information. Um, and the exact match we've talked about before. So let's have a look at, we'll just go to, Australian census records. No, it's not that. Oh, rats. Hit the wrong thing. I want the Australian voter, voters list. Electoral rolls. Go. Yeah. Now, I love these. I use this all the time. So if we want the electoral rolls, they're so much fun. So why, why you'd want to use electoral rolls is, for a start, you can find your own name. <laughs> if you're <laughs> old enough. <laughs> I'll put in me. <laughs> I know it's pathetic, but like, <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Um, voila, here I am. Oh, so first, I know, I know. I come up, I'm famous. Not really. Um, I'm on Ancestry, me and one million billion others. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the lecture I was going to 1980, so no, um, yep. no hiding how old you are. So, um, and um, anyway, it's sort of fun. Um, 
so Heather, Andrea, but uh, where am I? Up the top. Yeah. Up the top. There yeah. yeah. Belle Bernie, that was the name of the house. Bell, yeah. And then there's, you know, Megan, my sister and mum and dad, Wendy and Frank. So um, anyway, so <laughs> you can... You can for oh, that's Frank Rovers. He married my sister. Oh, I didn't realize he's right <laughs> under. The, oh, how cool is that? He's right underneath us. <laughs> oh, sorry, I never noticed that before. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> meant to be. Meant to be, and that's my uncle and my auntie. Yeah, <laughs> and people we don't know with the same surname. Yeah, but anyway, so that's the electoral role. But, but one of the things about the electoral role for Australian content is it tells you how people might have moved. If they might have started off in Victoria, they might have moved to Queensland or somewhere. So you can actually follow people through. It tells you their occupation and things like that. But um, it, it is, uh, yeah, that's just a fun thing to find yourself in the electoral role. If you're old enough, you'd be too young, Tracy. But um, <laughs> because the first, it ends at 1980. So, but once you've got your, um, your record, I'll just gonna tell you what you can do with it. So we'll just move this. You can then, then you can track their travel, can't you, through electoral rolls, like where they yeah. might have been to. Yeah, where they might have been. So places like, they've lived. Yeah, yeah. So and um, it it is really interesting. So each state has um, license with different um, years because sometimes New South Wales, I think, doesn't start to 1920. Victoria starts at 1903. So there's a raft of information on electoral rolls. So once you've got your record, you can either Send the image home, which is uh, email it. Email it to anyone. So this is why you can actually email it to um, someone else or email it to yourself. And then you can, or else you can just save it to your computer. It just saves and downloads as a um, uh, JPEG. And then you can um, do what you like with it after that. So it's quite, um, it's quite good. So that's the two things you can do with it. Uh, if you actually subscribe to Ancestry yourself, there's another option, which is save to my shoebox, which is just a, like a temporary thing to save to. But once you've got your, uh, hang on, go back to here. Once you've got your record, um, you can also view printer friendly. And that just, um, if you wanted to do that, which gives you like a transcription. But if, you know, it's up to you if you can't read it. So that's sometimes handy uh, if you're looking at um, things that are written in, um, in, in like in handwriting not typed and trying to decipher it sometimes view printer friendly gives you that sort of option so so if you've got an ancestry tree though you can save it to the person oh, you can save you? it to your yeah. tree yeah so you can save that to your tree um i'll show you that quickly later on so um i'll just go i don't have any other suggested records because i'm so young and there's nothing else for me here but um if we go back to um I sometimes get lost in ancestry. I have to confess, and then I just <laughs> sometimes it's easy to just go back to search and start again. You just, I'm just trying to. Oh. Uh, so actually, while we're here, you can actually edit that search. So we can edit, um, either edit to add more information, or else, um, in this case, I'll just change the name, and we'll just go and look at Walter Thules. Um So just remember the editing. Is, is good. You've done your search and think, oh, I don't really like that. You can, if you edit, you can add more information and start the search again. So that is quite, quite useful. So, uh, okay. Right. This is a record I want. So this is my grandfather. We found his record here. And what sometimes happens is you find one record and then it gives you suggested records, but not in this case. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, I did this search this morning and it did. I'm trying to find out if I look at the record, would that make a difference? Sorry, a bit slow here, but um, go back to Walter Thewlis. Ah. Oh. Okay. Does it do that is in it, a normal search or just from the tree? Sorry? I know you get suggested records when you look at somebody in a tree. But yeah, that's the hint, but in it? a normal yeah. search, yeah, you can also get... Okay, let's start again. Um, 
Oh, because I'm in special collections. Oh, this isn't like I'm very organised, is it? If I go to, um, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to show you the example, an example yeah. which I had before. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, you were searching one collection. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's right. So we'll go back and do my Walter Herbert Thewlis, that's Grandpa, and that's him here. Oh, still doesn't give me them. <laughs> oh. This gave it to me before. Ah, oh, voila. There we go. Okay, so, so sometimes you get what you get is suggested records. So I have to say, sometimes they're really, really good and sometimes they're just rubbish. But like sometimes you think that isn't possibly him. I can't see even understand how you could give me that suggestion. But, you know, you can often, often sometimes they're gold. Sometimes you just think, oh my goodness, I never would have found this otherwise. You get, you know, all these interesting things that come up that you never would have thought of. So, um, it is worth looking at these suggested records. Oh, that's him there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so that here we had a um, hardware shop. So that's the city directory. And um, Walter Herbert, Ironmonger, 712 Sydney Road, Brunswick. Oh, that's him. Oh, so gorgeous. Yeah. So you can, I mean, that's a suggested record. So you, you can sometimes find these things. So, you know, it, it is worth looking at the suggested records. So um they're just fun now before we go into run out of time here as usual message boards at the top here that um that sort of is like a, a help just a what's the message board you can just write in we'll put in theolus as an example and and this is where people put in records about um Put, putting queries about, you know, the oldest family births. So you, you might find that someone else is researching the same line as you or whatever it is. You can just you just put a message in about your family and you may or may not get an answer. But the point is, you know, you don't know what you're going to find. So so these message boards are worth looking at. Charts and forms also along the top here is um, if you're a paper person, you can download your ancestral chart from here which is a good way to, um, if you're not, if you're not into um, computer records, this is where you'd put you and mum and dad, et cetera, or else you can download your family, um, your family group sheet as well. So, so they're just interesting charts and forms there. Um, but we're just going to go back to search. Oh, family trees. Yeah. So while we hit family trees, it does allow you, um, the, the library version allows you to, uh, look at people's family trees, but not actually um, add your own. So you have to subscribe to add your own, um, add your own family tree, but you can look at everyone else's. So, and if you want to message the person, you you have to be a uh, you have to subscribe to do that as well. So I've just put in um, well my grandfather again, and if you scroll down, so on the left right here. If you just go down to family trees, and this is actually my family tree here, but this is him. So you can look at that. So what you get, so that's um, that's that's grandpa on my family tree. So as Tracy said before, you can add um, like the the uh, the record that we found before his um the the um electoral roll record. I got anything in the gallery? So you can you can add these to the gallery. So or so that's quite interesting. So that so that means you can download the electoral record, add it to your gallery, and then other people can look at it. You can add photographs to the gallery, anything you like. So it is that is quite good. Um, it's a great way to find photos of your family that you don't have. Yes, it's true. Yeah, sneak that's around right. people's family trees. Yeah, because <laughs> other people have put it in. And yeah. the thing with uh, the thing with um, um, the thing with um, yeah, it is, that is good. Uh, I do a lot of um, 
So I did a lot of research. So now I've started up a million family trees of people I research who aren't related to me. But um, but sometimes, you know, looking at other people's family trees, sometimes you're a lot of rubbish as well because sometimes you know for a fact that that is not correct. Yes. And then you see the same mistake repeated, repeated, repeated. But, you know, sometimes there's, you just find gold and you find children you don't know. And and as you say, you've, as Tracy said, you find photos that you don't know if you come from a, you know, family that um, was a bit... um. Um, was um didn't take photos. Didn't take photos, before. or else you're um, or else you know you, they were estranged from the family and didn't get the family photos at the end. Whatever whatever the reason is, yeah, you can you can do that. So once you've got there, if you go to the trees um, view, view tree. This, this is both sides of my family, so I just put in anything there. So that's um. But if you're thinking, oh my goodness, where is this person on this tree? Go to tree search here and just put in, um, I put in Walter before and I found out there's about 10 different Walters on the family. But um, if you go to click on your person and then you find him there and um, and then you can click on him and get back to the same page that we had before. So, you know, it, it does give you, the library version does give you the opportunity to look through other people's family trees, which is, you know, find information you didn't know. If they're public, that's true. Mm. If they're public, so um, but anyone on a family tree, if they're still alive, is 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 automatically um, not showing, right? On a, not showing um to other people. So there are you know privacy issues there. So privacy things there. So uh, if you don't go there, anyway. So that's fun. That's fun. Do, do we have to come to the uh, Cranbourne Library to access this? No, all our libraries. Okay. Any, any about Hampton Park, Emerald, um, Bunjil Place, all our libraries you can go to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this okay. other thing here while we're here on Family Tree, Life Story. Uh, sometimes, um, and it's just she makes, makes this up and sometimes it's um, <laughs> it's a bit um, fanciful. <laughs> I don't always trust that. But anyway... No. But, but the actual facts in there is, is interesting. The gallery is interesting. So, and, and more just gives you um, an idea of um, who else is in the family and, and, and just other ideas of, you know, all the rest of it. So, you know, it is, it is a good thing to look at. How long do they hold on to family trees for? Eileen said that she had a friend who passed away oh. three years ago. So would her trees still be on Ancestry? I think so, because unless you take it down. Oh, hang on, no, because if you're not paying a subscription anymore... But if you aren't paying a subscription, the tree stays there. Yeah. You just can't access certain things. Oh, okay. Right, right. So do you want to do a search for Eileen? Search. Oh, it's for Eileen's friend's tree. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, who Have would be on it? Eileen, do you know what would Pam have put it under? Um, it'd be Pam, um, oh, I think of her married name is Sherlock, so, but it'd be Pam. So how would we? Norton. Can you search, can you search just family trees? Uh, if you put in the person's name and like death date or birth date or something like that, oh. you should be able to find that. Okay. Person. Public member trees. I've just clicked on that on the right hand side here. Okay, so would I need to know? Pam or Pamela, Eileen? Well, you could put uh, Pam. I think you could get away with Pam. Yeah, Pam Norton, I think her surname would be. Um, so... So you got here ten thousand results of a Pam Norton. Um, what was the husband? What just is that her maiden name or a married name? Married name. Sorry, that's her maiden married well, no maiden you, name. Well, if you put that in as well in your search, uh, that would bring in. And also, if it's Australia. You can put Australia. Right. In. Okay. So I might leave that for now because yeah. I'm sort of run out of time because I'm talking too much. But um, I'm, we're looking at family trees in January as well. Uh, if we just go back to search, I'll just give you an example of the um, Australian records that we've got in Ancestry. 
click on our little map here. Move down a bit. Wait for that. Click on 63 collections. And then so there uh, we get the electoral rolls, marriage, birth tests and marriage indexes, the same as what you get uh, through the various states, but um, it's all combined into one. Symmetry indexes, there's a whole, lots of convict records, lots of Australian convict records, um, shipping records, there's everything. There's a, a, um, Ancestry is increasing their Australian content all the time. So um, there are lots of different things you can find on there. They also have a rape books collection, which is really good from the 1800s. That's what their partners partnered with um, Public Records Office of Victoria with, uh, together with. And um, they have lots of things. It, it's, um, it's just worth going through their list of, of um, records there. So lecture roles, we talked about lecture roles. Um, I just have a look at the UK census collection, which is another thing that I use all the time. If you have any UK um, ancestors, you can either do a general search or you can search through each one individually. If you scroll down to the bottom here, so we'll search 1871 England. This is so much fun. And I found this before. So I'm searching for Weatherhead in 1871 English census. And I'll just look at one at random. Just as an example, what you can see, because what I'm going to show you is this last column. What is your ancestor, deaf and dumb, blind, imbecilic or an in, in, idiot or a lunatic? So... <laughs> That's what you can find out from the English census. I know that we don't do that anymore. I know it's politically incorrect. I know it's wrong. But, you know, I sort of find it a bit amusing, but it's sad. Anyway, the English census is just an amazing resource. Apart from that, it's uh, look, you find, of course, where they lived, their name, and each per a person is assigned as a head of the household. So it could be a woman, could be the man. In this case, it's Caroline here. And uh, she's a head who she's living with her sister. And with her niece and that's really great information if you're a family um it says she, she's a widower and widower and single 57 63 and 29 uh tells you their occupation tells you where they're born it is just so much information um you know the, there's canadian census on there's american census each census tells you different information some of the early english census census records don't tell you as much as the later ones but so but you can um you can find out so much through these census records so they're just the most amazing resource um the other, the only thing with census records like everything else is that i was looking for um frederick bales the town of bales is named after him and for some in one census, his family was listed as Bayless, B-A-Y-L-I-S-S, which suggests that's how you actually pronounce the word. So um, sometimes if you can't find um, the person you want, uh, so if I'm looking for Thomas Weatherhead or I'm looking for John Smith, search for his sister, say, who might be, if you're lucky, she might have been, <coughs> you know, Cassandra Smith or some other more glamorous name. Um, you know, sometimes search for another family member who has a less common name, try the whole um you know phonetic spelling so but you know if you can find someone on an english census record to get their address and their occupation and everything it is just it's just wonderful i just think i, I just think it's such a great resource so um it's well worth Is anybody at. with a tick in that last call no i, I haven't one. no oh you found one yeah i have that, found one i have you here yeah. i mean it, it's sad i can't remember when it was but no. yeah, one of them yeah, but you know, it just tells you how how a society has changed for mm. the better, but in this sense, but um, you know, really, it is sort of fun. Um, and and you can also um, I just love these records. I know chicks here either. Oh, it's a shame. Um, oh, the other thing, of course, you can find out from from these things is is the status of the family because sometimes you find them with um. You know, they have a maid and a governess and a seamstress, etc., living with them. Clearly, they were sort of well off. So you can also <clears throat> make, you know, find out about, um, uh, you know, their um, 
economic status as well. So there's lots of things you can see from an English census. The Australian census records have not been um, have not been kept. I believe is correct, aren't they? I think now you can tick a box to say you want the records kept for the future, but I don't. But we don't. We don't have the sort of same resources uh, sources resources here as um what the English have. So um, no. definitely worth looking at. Um, so that's just a few of the various things you can find on Ancestry. I know it's been a bit of a rambly talk, but as a, as a summary, Ancestry is really fun. I mean, just put a name in, just go to your search page, put a name in, put some information in. You're going to find something, even if it is your own, if you're old enough, <laughs> your own um, first electoral enrolment. Um, yeah, there's a lot of database on that you don't even know about. And that's why, you know, you can search a special collection, but sometimes if you just put a general search in, they just really surprise you with information or, or databases that you didn't know that they had. And also they're adding new material all the time. And that's why um, it's really worth looking. Like they've got passenger lists. We've chased Helena Rubenstein, they're the makeup person. Like for instance, someone like her who uh, moved around, There's she's, she's mentioned uh, leaving Australia and then going to England, England to America, back to America, back to England. Like I found about 20, 20 shipping records for her, which tells you where she's gone throughout her life. And, and what you find with Helena Rubenstein, the uh, makeup woman is that she changes her age every single time, but that's, that's beside the point. But, you know, but I mean, you know, clearly she's not a relative of mine, but you might find that your relative traveled overseas and didn't expect that because you find them on an, a passenger list from say coming into San Francisco or leaving England. So you just don't know, you know, there's so many things out there and, and you just don't know what's there. That's why sometimes a general search and waiting through some of the records or, or uh, limiting by say birth year is really worth it because you find out things that, um, uh, that you never knew about your um, ancestor. And, um, and as I said, you, you will usually get a result. You're not going to necessarily get your family tree back to William the Conqueror, but you're going to find a result somewhere because ancestry just has so many, um, so many records. So, um, yeah, I still love it. Let's go. So any questions? Yeah. We're so, all pumped. We want to go search our families. I'll go and search your family. Oh, it's, it's just fun. And so I said, go to our webpage, www.ccl.vic.gov.au. Go to... Uh, online resources. Online resources. Thank you. And then family tree. And then you can log on from home. Um, so with... Um, with Ancestry, there, any amount of people can use it. Find my search. We can only have a limited amount of people at the time. But Ancestry at the moment, you can use it from home. As many people as you like can use it at one time. It's just, it's just worth playing around with. It's such a fun database. <laughs>